getting into the Pauline epistles, right? Epistles that uh, are written by Paul. Uh, actually, there are 13 of the epistles are written. All right. Uh, these epistles are known as letters or brief or epistle or epistolon. Uh, those are the words that are used there. Uh, maybe what is the difference between a letter and a piece of uh, a letter is something non literary, a means of communication between persons who are separated from each other, confidential or personal in its nature. It is intended only for the person and person to whom it is addressed. And not all, for, not all for the uh, public or any kind of publicity. And whereas a piece of, it is an artistic literary form, a species of literature, just like dialogue, oration, and drama. So a piece of is a different category. Um, this is, uh, okay, the contents of the piece are identified for publicity. They aim at interesting public right so it's not so th there is a slight difference between letter right so I understand um, <clears throat> you know that all these if when you read what Paul wrote it was really epistles epistles that is for public uh, for people to know all right so uh, I wanted to say, uh, here is that, um, yes, these letters of Paul, uh, certain characteristics, the characteristics are there. There are three characteristics. First of all, length. Look at writings. Most private letters in Paul's day average 90 words in length. Uh, li uh, literal letters to 100 words. The average length, length of Paul's letters is 1,300 words. So it is not, I would say, uh, um, like other letters, it is epistles for public, most of them. Maybe even Philemon had 335 words. It is one chapter, right? Romans had 7,000 words. So Paul's were Paul's letters were actually epistles, and they are theological in nature, communal in address, and therefore it is for public, not for one person. I wanted to say one some more thing. I'm an okay. I'm a news, okay, I'm a nuances. That's how it pronounced. I'm a nuances. What is that? Uh, it is the use of an amenuensis for various reasons, including the fact that coarse grain of papyrus, right? Remember, all these Bibles were written on papyrus that read the plant. And the, the grain was coarse, like a rough surface. And therefore, writing was difficult. It was so what usually happened, it was usually dictated to a professional scribe or secretary. And these secretaries were called as amanuensis. Right? Amanuensis. A dictation was normally as a uh, it was normally given syllable by syllable rather than word by word. So let's look at in Paul's epistles the use of amanuensis. All right. Romans chapter 16, verse 22. Sixteen verses twenty-two. Can one of you please read? Yes. I know that you all are muted. Uh, so please, 
Um, one of you open and read for me. Romans chapter 16, verse 22. Anyone? Anyone can read. All right, I don't have much time. If you, if you take time. All right, this is what you read. I, Teritas, who write this letter, greet you in the Lord. Look at that. I, so who, who, who wrote the letter to Rome? We know that Paul wrote, right? Paul was the writer. But it says, Teritas, Teritas, also, what was behind. Actually, Teritas was the uh, amanuensis. So that's something that you need to know. Second general style. Yes, if you look at Paul, Paul's letter usually has God greetings. Right? Sender, recipient, and greetings. And maybe he begins with a thanksgiving or blessing or a, maybe a prayer. An inter intercessory prayer. That's how he begins. Then Paul's letter has a body part. Whatever he wants to communicate, right? Um, maybe, we, for example, Romans will have a lot of uh, theological, like gospel, uh, the problem with the sin, God's pr provision for salvation, and the issue of Israel, things like that. You know, he wants to write, and there will be exhortation, then there will be uh, closing. Right? This is how Paul writes his letters. Closing, right? So if you look at Paul's writing, you will see uh, usually this way. Now, uh, general style. And now let's also look at uh, transmission of Paul's epistles. How these epistles were transmitted. How this is came to other people. Emperor Augustus had established a postal system. Yeah, there was a postal system. But it was only for official dispatches, not for private, private cities like Paul. So thousands, thousands of years ago, there were postal system, right? Emperor Augustus, uh, you know, where, wherever he wants to send his do documents, there was a postal system. Uh, but what happened? Our citizen had to rely on special messengers or friendly travelers. Paul writes to Rome, someone has to carry. Paul writes. Let's look at uh, Colossians 4 here. Right? Uh, if you have a Bible, you can open Colossians 4. Colossians 4. Verse 7. Uh, 7 and 8. All right, Colossians 4, 7 and 8. Can one of you please read? Colossians 4, 7 and 8. Yeah, it's here. Uh, <clears throat> as, to, as to all my... Uh, as to all my affairs... He names a person Tychicus, our beloved brother and faithful servant and a fellow born servant in the Lord, will bring you information. Right? I have sent him to you for this purpose, that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. So right here, to, to church at Colossae, Paul is writing his letter, giving him, giving Tychicus, right? That is, the spelling is Tiki. Yes, Tychicus. So there are carriers who carry letters to various destinations. Now, yes, in what is the canonical order of all 13 epistles? Yeah, generally, we know that Romans to Philemon. Why? Why Romans to Philemon? Because uh, whoever arranged Paul's letters 
they arranged the longest first, smallest at the end. You see, longest is Romans. Romans has got 16 chapters with more verses than Corinthians. Okay. So longest to smallest, shortest. But if you want to know a chronological order, which one is written first, which then the second, uh, while well, this is the order. Galatians first, Thessalonians second, Corinthians third, Romans, Colossians, Philemon, Ephesians, Philippians, First Timothy, Titus, and Second Timothy. That's how chronological order, canonical order, Romans to Philemon, right? Longest to the shortest. So 13. Now, which one is missing here? Anyone? Right? There's one. Usually people say, Paul wrote 14, and I have included only 13 because someone is missing. That is Hebrews, right? Because we don't know who is really the author of Hebrews. I suspect that it is not Paul, somebody else, right? Looking at the canonical order, I don't see any reason because Hebrews comes at the end. It's not part of Paul's writing together. Galatians, or like Romans to Philemon, it doesn't come. If it had come, we'd, people would have arranged in between. So I generally don't think it is written by Paul. Right? Maybe written by Luke. Maybe. We don't know. All right. What else? Uh, Galatians. Now let's go to Galatians. Mm -hmm. Authorship. Who wrote? Who wrote Galatians? It is the least challenged of all epistles claiming to have been written by Paul. Yeah, least disputed one. Right. The famous. Uh, to Benjamin school and this angel believe that only Galatians 1 and 2 Corinthian Romans were genuine Paul epistles. Therefore, Galatians is usually considered genuine except by the most radical critics. So most of the people believe Galatians is written by Paul, right? And uh, if you know the external evidences, Clement of Rome, Sad, Ignatius, Polycarp, Justin Martyr, Martian Canon, Moratorian Canon, they all believe that, so we don't have much issues. That way, it may be the destination. The name Galatia. Galatia. What is that? It's a variant form of salt, right? Salt or Keltai or Platoi, whom the Romans called Gauls or Gauli, right? So Galatian has another name, another variant as Keltoi or Keltoi. These people migrated from France and the area of da uh, Danube, I don't know the right pronunciation, I guess that is, Danube Basin into Greece in the third century. So they migrated from France to Greece in the third century BC, right? Actually, in one seven, I don't know, in two seven eight BC, three tribes invaded Asia Minor in Turkey. In two three BC, they were confined formerly a Phrygian territory around the centers of Tavium, Angra, and Piscinus. And the first century BC, Romans moved into Asia Minor. And the Galatians, or known as Gauls, sided with them. In 64 BC, they helped Pompey defeat the king of Pontus and became client kingdom with the added territory, including Antioch, Econium, Lystra, and Derbe. Uh, in 25 BC, Galatia became an imperial province under Roman government. Right? Roman government. So that is Galatia.
Uh, they are migrated people from France. Right. Therefore, the name Galatia can be understood in two senses, right? Two senses. That is, northern territory of ethnic Galatia around the city of Tadium, Ankara, and Pisinus. Pisin uh, Pisin this is a part of, you know, the um, uh, Turkey's areas, right? Um, so, that is what northern territory, right? It can be northern territory. Or some people believe that Roman, the, it includes Roman province whose territory includes cities which Paul visited on his first missionary journey, like Antioch, Conium, Lystra, and Derbe. So, there are, or the term Galatia can be understood two ways. One is the northern Galatia, all the other Romans province where Paul traveled. So therefore, there are two Galatian theory, right? That is, for example, Lightfoot would say, and he comes up with a North Galatian theory. He says, Paul would have visited this area on his second missionary journey. It was a traditional view of the church until 18th century. Church generally believed that Paul wrote to this northern part, like this one, northern territory. But in the second and third century, southern part of Galatia became part of the province of Cilicia and Pisidia, and the province of Galatia was reduced to the northern Galatia. Thus, church fathers understood it that way. They said Galatia means the northern territory. Right? I have um, a picture here. Right? Uh, if you look at the picture, I remember I said the northern part of Galatia here. Right? Um, you have Antioch here. You have uh, uh, Derby, Conium, Lystra, Pisanus, Angura, and uh, uh, Tavium. Right, these are all, look at that. These are all uh, these, um, maybe part of Turkey mainly, right, area, area. And these are the, remember this area, uh, the seven churches that uh, Book of Revelation was written, right, this area. Yeah, it's all part of Turkey. So, I understand, so Galatia, when Bible say which is the Galatia, um, Church of Fathers understood as the northern, where you have Tavium, Angura, and Pasinas. This, yeah, this one, this area was the uh, was the region of Galatia as Church of Fathers understood. But all right, so Luke seems seems to use ethnographic titles rather than official Roman provincial tribe titles to describe regions encompassed by Paul's itinerary. Thus, a letter by Paul to Galatians would be ethnic Galatians of the north. Right? Yes. North. So, the letter is written to the northern areas of churches. Quite interesting. I, I was fascinated. Look at the, all this area where Christians predominant one time and now it is not. Please think about the reason why. That tells something, right? Yeah, why it is not. And I also wanted to talk about South Galatian theory. Yes, Paul visited this area in his first missionary journey. Luke says nothing about founding churches in Northern Galatia. More likely, Paul wrote to churches whose establishment is recorded in Acts rather than to churches about which I have no information. So, so South Galatian theory, mainly by F. A. Bruce and William Ramsey, they argue Paul wrote this letter to the southern part of Galatia. And is is mentioned in Galatians 16, verse 1. Right, Galatian churches held in collection at no representatives from northern Galatians are named since there is no reference to historic, historic decision made at the Council of Jerusalem contained in Galatians, 
a decision that would have provided Paul with a cringing argument. Uh, the book must have been written before the event occurred. And Paul had only visited southern Galatia before Acts 15, right? So argument. And therefore, Paul's missionary policy concentrated on the main roads and centers of communion, communication in the provin Roman provinces, none of which included cities of northern Galatia. So later came up with the theory. Yeah, the, actually, the letter was not written to the northern Galatia, right? Rather, it was written to the southern churches where Paul visited, right? Paul visited. So that is the, so maybe a new theory came and this letter was written to the southern Galatia. All right, that is about the uh, place of writing. Yeah, I think we will stop it here.